unstoppable after that. Tyson didn't know what to do with him. This is Jonathan Aguil of Fifth Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Jeff Powell of the Daily Mail. Jeff, uh, how are you? How, how are you? Are you finding me back home? I know you obviously in Riyadh last week. Uh, yes, I'm happy to be back home. Although finding this place was a nightmare. <laughs> I've had a nice stroll for an hour around North Greenwich in the rain. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, we are here for a, a magnificent seven card that Frank Warren's thing on on uh, July 20th. Uh, just before we get into that, uh, do want to reflect on on last week. Did the fight go how? you expected Jeff? Uh, I I thought actually I said there was a great danger of it being a draw which was actually how I scored it um, as it, by chance um, so no I couldn't say it went exactly I knew it'd be very close I, and I thought if he was going to win Tyson would have to knock him out which clearly he didn't it was only him who was knocked out so those elements of it a lot of the elements I expected were in it, but um, not the final outcome. Uh, I spoke to uh, Colin Hart, uh, and he, I spoke to him about sort of the, the knockdown and whether the ref should have stopped. And he said the rules are that if that situation happens and the fight goes into the ropes, that it's a standing eight count. So were you satisfied with the way uh, Mark Nelson handled that? Yes, it's, uh, the regulation is if the ropes are holding you up. But if you'd be down, except that you're, you're against the ropes, then it's, a stand, it's counted as a knockdown and it's, a, it's an eight count. It doesn't have to be standing. If he then slumped onto the floor while he was counting and didn't get up, well, that would be another matter. But he didn't. He managed to sort of somehow stagger upright as he does. <laughs> Uh, you know, Tyson Fury uh, was, I believe, the slight pre-fight favourite. Uh, having taken the loss now, uh, how does he come back from this? Well, he's, uh, it wasn't categoric that he would enforce the rematch. It was sort of, but um, not clear, no clarity that he would. Now, immediately after being almost knocked out and losing the fight, he does need time to reflect. Part of that reflection, I'm afraid, will be that um, now Usyk has his number. I had Usyk losing all the losing all the first half of the fight, but then he by then he'd worked him out, and he was unstoppable after that. Tyson didn't know what to do with him. Knowing if Usyk will have the confidence of beating him, knowing he'll be anxious after losing for the first time, and knowing that uh, Usyk, who's as, in as intelligent a boxer as we've ever seen, has worked him out, he's got a problem with that. Uh, Will he retire? Maybe, except that he always says that what keeps him out of his depressions and his mental health problems is training and fighting. So that, that complicates that decision. I think if that wasn't a, part, a factor, I think with all his money and his big family, I think he would retire. But he might go on because he needs it uh, for health reasons. Obviously, a, a big talking point from the fight is, uh, you know, Fury's corner. He had Sugar Hill Stewart, main trainer, Andy Lee, and also John Fury, his father. A lot of people felt there was way too many instructions, voices. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, if, if frankly, John Fury, I'm not in favour of fathers being in corners and training fighters in, in general principle. Being that uh, Fury is such an outspoken and dogmatic person, John, seen. Uh, I think that could create even, an even bigger problem. I, I haven't heard what was being said, but apparently it was contradictory. Um, the advice from, uh, from the two trainers was different from what John was saying. I'm not quite sure which one of them was supposed to have told him he was miles in front going into the last two rounds. Uh, whoever said that shouldn't be in the corner next time because they were just trying to boost his confidence maybe, but he, needed, he, he didn't need false information like that he needed to try and get get it get the man on the floor and there was an element of that in the in the last round um, but that was that was poor information I don't think it's all very well trying to stimulate people and, and make them feel confident but if it gives them if, if it comes in the form of advice which is mistaken and causes you not to perhaps to give your final big effort in the 11th it's a mistake is there, is there an element of you know that's just how they they were scoring the fight, or you know, is it? Do you feel like that was the case that they were trying to, you know, essentially boost his confidence heading into the final few rounds? I don't know what they were thinking, but it was a mistake. Um, I suspect it's a mixture of both. 
over, overconfidence born of the fact that, in my view, he, he won all the early rounds. I don't know where anybody found that Usyk got around in the first half of the fight. Uh, I think what sometimes happens is if you're constantly scoring for one fighter, a lot of judges think, oh, can't keep on giving it to the same fighter, and they give a round, almost a sympathy vote. And then if you do a couple of those, you're now in trouble if the other guy can't catch up who deserves to win. You suggested that uh, you know Tyson Fury perhaps would consider retirement, uh, barring the fact, as you mentioned, if he was to retire, how would he be remembered? You know, in the, in the all-time list. Uh, a great entertainer, whatever people's opinions are of him. Um, I think we could all do without the, the swear words when he gets excited. Uh, the four-letter words doesn't do him justice because he's an intelligent guy. Sit down and chat with him, and it's it's terrific. It's his, his knowledge of the game. Uh, his intelligence of how to fight and his knowledge of breadth of knowledge of religious and, and world, world affairs is, is tremendous. He doesn't need to actually resort to, to four letter words to make his point. That said, he's, he is a great entertainer. That said, he sells fights. That said, he's the A fight in any fight he goes into, A side in any fight he goes into. Uh, so he'll certainly be remembered for his entertainment value, that's for sure. No one can take that away from him. Where will he rank now? Um, in the, the annals of heavyweight boxing, I'm sure he would have liked to have overtaken Lennox Lewis in any, any reckoning you have of that. Well, not now, because uh, you know, Len Lennox was, un was undisputed and, uh, and, f and finished undisputed. So he's, he's, not, he's not up to Lennox's level, unfortunately for him. And he's, I see that Ring Magazine didn't have him in the top ten. They had him in, as I did, fairly recently. Uh, ninth, I think ninth or something. But I'm afraid he'll have slipped out now. Now, Usyk, uh, you know, Rockets, very near to the top of that all-time list. And I'm afraid Tyson drops out of that. So he's not going to be remembered as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time unless he's able to come back and beat Usyk. And, you know, in terms of Usyk, uh, after that victory, is he your number one boxer in the world? You've got Terence Crawford, Inoue, there's, there's so many top pound-for-pound pound, uh, lists. But, yeah, where does Usyk rank? Well, if you're, looking, if you're going to quantify it by undisputed champions, then um, Crawford and Canelo and Inoue uh, are up there. Personally, um, uh, I'm inclined... I'm inclined to think he's the best at a pound for pound at the moment. I hesitate because of Inui, who's Inui, whatever we call him, uh, in Japanese. Is um, I, I really like him, and he's he's going through the divisions as well, more divisions in fact. So he's he's my contender against him. But yes, at the moment has to be Usyk as the outstanding fighter of this generation as we stand here today. Yeah. Uh, just a, a couple more. Uh, we've got Wilder against Zhang next week. Uh, what's your thoughts on the fight, Jeff? Uh, it's, it's a problematic fight for Wilder because even if he gets his head out of whatever soporific state he was in uh, in Costa Rica, uh, get finding true karma and love, if he gets himself back in the mood of being a fighter and, and hits him, even I'm not sure his massive punch can take Zhang out. Uh, so I think he's got a problem going into that fight. He's liable to be hit a lot himself, uh, and he's liable to find that this guy doesn't go down. I mean, Ergovic hit him with dozens of massive blows, and he just came walking forward and hit him back. It, that's a big problem for Wilder, and if you can't stop him, I think he'll lose heart and lose the fight. And Hergovic against Dubois, how do you think that's going to play out, Jeff? Obviously the winner is likely to fight Joshua in September. Yes, the, the winner is. Um, it's, it's, the same, it's the same equation here. Dubois relies on his big punch. And I don't think Hergovic goes to, uh, to any puncher at the moment. So, he's, so Daniel's got a problem there, I think. Um, Hergovic has been given the, the results in some fights which I didn't think he, he won, so I don't know quite what's going on with him. Uh, maybe he doesn't fill too many seats in arenas and sell too many pay-per-views. But, um, you know, if, if there's any sympathy judging towards him, he'd beat, he'll beat Dubois on points.
All right, Jeff, uh, appreciate your time. Uh, good to see you. And uh, yeah, a uh, lot of boxing coming up this, this summer, so I'm sure I'll see you, see you around. We certainly will. It'll be a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers, Jeff.